Hey everybody, Tony with uh, Cardboard Wars here. I haven't posted any new videos in a while because I've been away taking care of family issues and issues around the house <clears throat> and generally working. But I've also been hard at work trying to improve this thing. Uh, one of my greatest faults, I think, is that I have trouble when it comes time to answer the question, is it good enough? And I'm always looking to improve it. And as I see other people's modules that have been released, I see new things that I think can be done in order to improve this. And so I'm constantly tweaking. One of the things that I was away doing, in addition to taking care of family business, uh, is constantly tweaking this thing. Um, one of the things that I've been trying to figure out for a long time was that the best way to stack uh, certain counters or create certain counters so that they do not get picked up when you pick up a stack it won't grab them and move them as well uh, other modules I've had the frustration of for example take this stack you click on the stack and you pick up the airfield and you walk away with the airfield and unless you know I'm very familiar with where it's supposed to go once it's discovered, the question becomes, well, where did it go? But I have found a solution to that. Like, I can click on this and I can drag it away. Airfield stays there. But you can still click on it and do whatever it is that you want with the airfield. You can move it if need be. But it won't, won't move away with the stack. Uh, prior to this... I had them set up in such a way to where you had to hold down an additional key in order to um, select them and move them. But I think that I've now found a way where, as you can see, this stack um, well, these two are on the same level, but you can separate it and you can easily get to, to whatever it is that you want to get to and flip it over or whatever. But because these are items that are supposed to stay in one place, it doesn't go away when you click on a stack and move it. So I think that that's a vast improvement. Um, one of the other things that I've done, let's take this cruiser off over here. Let's see if I implemented it in this um, like I said constantly borrowing from other games <clears throat> but for the Europa level um, games or scenarios I've made it so that no these don't have it but it's not important that they have it but I've made it so that supply considerations for the naval units, like whether they're low on ammo or low on fuel, you can, uh, instead of putting another marker on top, you can uh, simply um, just uh, right click. Let me grab one real quick from the Europa. Um, let's take the Rodney and we'll, we'll put it on land. We'll just say it's in dry dock. Um, let's zoom in a little bit. And if you right click, you can, oh, I've put in a lot of stuff. So actually let's put it out of here to see. You can, uh, see if 
the ammo is depleted or mark it that the ammo is depleted and see it'll move along with it. You can uh, mark it as low fuel and then go through and get rid of each of them when they're refueled. You can uh, show the gunnery range so that you can tell if an enemy ship has entered into its gunnery range. And I'm going to way out here. Uh, turn off the gunnery range. And you can also show the reaction range, just like with the air units. So that's the kind of stuff that I've been adding to this and um, generally trying to improve it, which means I'm going to have to go through and I'm going to have to redesign all of the scenario starts, but that's okay. I also have, I divided the first turn into a German turn, and then I did a second video um, for the Norwegian turn, which I've had in the can for a while, but I just have not been able to post it. And it will be posted, or it had been posted shortly before I did this one. Um, but I'm going to try and get a little bit ahead of the game. So here we are on turn two, April 12th to April 15th. And the Germans have a pretty strong foothold here. They have not captured Oslo yet. Uh, and right now they're just holding serve in Bergen and Trondheim and Narvik. Now, before this turn starts, the Germans get several goodies for free before any of the reinforcements come in. They get a supply depot here in Sweden that they can use to provide general supply. Uh, it cannot be used to provide attack supply, so I, I, in order to attack, I would have to get another supply depot in there. At each of these captured uh, artillery stores, they gain a captured uh, artillery battalion. Let's zoom in. This represents the Germans uh, taking the guns and ammunition that the uh, Norwegians had stored there. So the Germans get that instead. Um, they get one there at Trondheim, and they captured two down here. Uh, one here and one here. Uh around the Oslo area and that's actually I think the first time that I have ever captured all three of those artillery stores but when I last left off the uh, King's Guard had fled the city of Oslo because they were disrupted and I generally always flee with uh, I always flee because this is probably the most important piece that the Norwegians have, in my opinion, because of its ability to retreat uh, prior to, to combat regardless. It makes it very difficult for um, the Germans to destroy this. And... It is now no longer disrupted because it is the beginning of the next turn. So, the initial landings or the reinforcements that are coming in, this group is going to Drammen. This group is going to Moss here. And this group here is going to land 
and larvae. Because their goal is to be is to start pushing towards Stavanger since everything fell apart for the Germans over on that side of the map. Uh, there needs to be a push that direction in order to take Stavanger. So coming into the Oslo Fjord, every single one of these will be sunk on a six. So as we go across, we're going to go here, just left to right for each group. Um, so we'll start with Supply Depot, three, four, and these all make it. I'm going to put them right here for now. And then the next group, uh, let's see, five, one. Two, six. Oh, that guy did not make it. And a three. So most everything made it. Also, one thing that I've seen other um, modules do, I'll show in just a second. So we got five more rolls we need to make. So three, one, two. Two, six. Oh, and then supply got sunk. Oh, that one we can just delete. It's always more important to me to get the units through rather than um, the supplies. But in each one of those, we have uh, one. Two, one, two, and then a supply depot, so that's three. So, one of the things that I've seen some things do that I'm trying to figure out how to implement, and I'm trying to think of whether I should implement it or not, is to be able to right click on the unit and then send it to whatever box here. And I think that that is a really cool, really useful feature. Um, that way you don't have to open these up all the time. So, here we are. We are wide open. I need to get a unit here. Which this group coming in will be able to take and hold Halden. And capture this mobilization center in the process. Um, we have one, three, so I think the second must have been 388, 367, 367. So now we need to I have a, th a three-point plan that uh, I am going to implement including capturing Oslo, moving troops towards Stavanger, and starting to move troops up this direction. I also want to try to capture as many of these mobilization centers as I can. There's one there, one there, one here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. There's six in the immediate area. So I want to try and get as many of those as I can. So we begin with moving this regiment up into the city of Oslo. There's really only the headquarters there. Um, I'm going to move it and I'm going to move um, the artillery in just as a hedge in case there's some sort of exchange. 
then the artillery is lost, which is really not that big of a loss considering it's all captured. But it takes the risk off of my 6-4 uh, regiment here. This unit is going to cross the river but it is not strong enough to attack there. Let's see, one, two, three, four. We're going to move that there in order to keep anybody from swinging down behind the lines. And this group will start here. Oops, I mean, a moss. Let's get back up there. So, we're going to take a supply depot and a battalion. And we're going to move our two movement points to Halden. And we're also going to move these two battalions also to Halden just to keep this artillery unit from deciding to swing around behind. So there's step one. First, first, second, fourth, third, fourth. So these two, I'm going to have them hop the rail line. And it's been so long that Is it 214, second of the 169, third of the 169. So, unfortunately, the, the two most powerful artillery regiments have been not decimated, but they can't reform. So we're going to have to do the best with them that we can. So we spend one movement point here. Zoom out. And we can move, let's see, four times... 3 times 4 is 12. That's 1, 2, 3, 4. Flip that. 6, 7, 9, 11, 12. And also, one of the things that I've also done is you see the movement trail lines here. I've made it so that when you select any other unit, they disappear. But when you click back on it, you can see the movement. It, it makes it a little less cluttered. I'm just going to go ahead and move these here. And these will... Actually, I should be moving that with these folks up here so that there's some attack supply coming with them. I'm going to take these three. I am going to undo that move by one, and I'm going to interdict the hex side. Um, and then move on. interesting. How did I get rid of that? Delete. Uh, mark 
record other tight interdiction. And that's got the rotate. I wonder why. I wonder why this one and if the hex side. I'm gonna, definitely going to have to look into that. This is why I'm going through this play test. So I can find problems like that. So, counters. So we have this group that can still slip through. We're going to take these three, one. Three, two, three. <clears throat> Try and keep anybody here from slipping through. And then these can all move. One, two. Grab one of these up to there. Three, four. One, two, three, four. Mark this as captured. And, we're, and then these. Each battalion can carry one supply depot. So since I have three supply, three battalions, I can carry up to three supply depots. A regiment can carry three supply depots on its own. So, one, two, three, four. And I think I'm going to... Uh, expanded breakdown. And another idea that I just had is to put, which ones are these, is to put uh, into the uh, right-click menu uh, the ability to uh, reform a regiment or break it down through just through a right-click. So 340th is up to 196th. 340, 196. So there's 340. And then there. Move the supply over. There. Move him to there. And they're going to be pushing north to cross Lake Miosa here and try to get a jump on the Norwegians. Um, but that is pretty much everything that can be done for this turn for movement down here anyway. Um, oops. Wrong chart. Composition. We already have three, four, five more regiments on the way of the 181st Division and the artillery of the 196. I've got to start moving these over. One thing that I quickly forgot, that I promptly forgot, is that because this got shut down by Bomber Command we are going to be sliding 18 points of AAN to uh, discourage them from doing that again because I've got to keep that airbase open um There are also down here the reinforcements for the turn are 
the uh, Emmy, more Emmy 1 and 10 C's, a bunch of dive bombers. And I've got to try and get them into Norway as quickly as possible, which I've got to try to capture this airfield as quickly as possible. However, I cannot use my paratroopers this turn because the airbase got shut down. So we have artillery on its way to support the attack out of Bergen. I need to get supply there. We have 18 and 3. Here's 21. What do we have here? Two. What is in the fifth? And the wrong thing. What is in the fifth? Fifth has two, four, five. Five, six, seven. So we could get a three to one there. Um, movement to through woods. So we could, but there is no attack supply there. And there is none close enough yet. Two, three. Five. Five, so that would be the whole six. So it using the rail movement rules, I have to be within six movement points of a supply depot. And by using rail movement I can extend that up to twenty four. But like I said, I don't have um any supply depots in the area yet so for the moment they have no supply whatsoever so I'm going to take this this one is in supply because he just appeared Just go ahead and give them the old U1, and I've got to get supply up there as quickly as I can. So we're going to spend one movement point for in training, and there's one, two, three, four, one. Four, one. Just exactly the amount that I need to capture endlessness. And prevent Norwegian units from showing up there and preventing British from showing up there. And then far to the north, we're going to move. This supply depot has its own 
uh, movement ability. And so we will move it into Narvik so that we'll probably end up actually one, two, three, four. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and move it back here. We'll just pass it on through. Yeah, this supply depot does not need to be carried by anybody. So we'll pass it on through so that if the uh, Germans do get forced out, um, it won't be forced to retreat. However, we do need to keep an eye on anything slipping up from Bodo here to try and capture it. So that's pretty much the end of the movement phase. I'm not going to do anything here yet. These units. Oops. Are also out of supply. And I've got to get. Um, supply into them. The first turn, not so bad. It starts going downhill after that. But it's going to be difficult with these British planes, long-range planes here. So that's pretty much it for the movement phase. Need to sit and plan out uh, the um, air phase. Because I'm gonna, I, I have to try to disrupt the King's Guard here, even though they're likely going to. Um, oh, I forgot. No, 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 I did not. I thought that I had. Another um, artillery unit there. Maybe that's it there that I moved out of the way. But I will double check that in um, when I as I go through the air phase. For the air phase, I have two primary targets uh, one of which is the King's Guard here and after I wrapped up last night I discovered that I had somehow inadvertently deleted the captured two artillery battalion uh, so I put that back in place the other major target is the airfield up here outside of Trondheim since the uh, Royal Air Force has taken up residence there. So what I'm going to need is I'm going to take six, seven bombers from Kjobenhaven here. And they are well within range of the um, King's Guard Battalion. Let me reduce this just a little bit more. As you can see from here, let me slide up just a touch. from Kjobenhaven to the King's Guard. They are just barely in range of the Heinkel bombers here. Beyond those seven, everybody else is going to be sent on an extended range mission up to this airfield. So because I know um, The ranges, I'm not going to do this hex by hex. 
zoom in just a little bit swing to Copenhagen Copenhagen and pull out 70 one two Now, I'm going to be sending this group here with the uh, 2 5. Um, gonna send them off to bomb here. Bomb there. I am hanging on to the bombers with the 7 strategic bombing strength because. Going after the airfield up here is a strategic mission. So I get more bang for my buck even though they're flying extended range. I get at least two um, <clears throat> bombing factors each air unit. Now to this I am going to add the JU-88s. And all of these, even though I've got them all around, all of these are stationed in Germany. And it is something like 41 or 42 hexes to um, Vernez. Let's take a quick look here. Get rid of the movement. Let's take a look at the range. Heel to there is 42. So they have ample range to make it to that hex. Let's get back down here, grab these guys. I don't want to do range. Let's go ahead and scroll up here and then across. Come on. And then here I have a few more bombers. I have three bombers here that can easily make it into the area. Come on, we'll put these aside here. These are flying at normal range. These two stacks are extended range. Now, here, uh, there's seven, so they would be broken down into groups of three and four. Two. Giving them a total of 16 defense on the front line. Um, and 11 on the back line. So the transports here, I am going to fly. They are going to return to Germany after delivering their um, uh, cargo. So they are flying back. Return to Germany. So we have one, two, three, and these are going to have to fly at extended range. So they're going to require three transports each. So that's nine, one. How many do I have here? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Then we have two more transports here. So we have we can carry these at extended range. Yeah. 
it's going to be 369. So the supply is going to have to stay for now, and we're going to have to take another six and fly. Come on. Now they're going to be flying to an airbase that has a nine capacity, and I still have to leave room for uh, three bombers to return because they are, they are not flying at extended range. So these three can fly the supply and airdrop it in return. Now the heavy fighters and the dive bombers, I can't move up quite yet because <clears throat> I don't have enough airfields because I was not able to take Sola outside of Stavanger. And right now I cannot plan another airdrop because this airbase is shut down. As you can see, because Bomber Command had to go and stick their noses into it. Um, these three, I am also going to send a supply with them. Uh, supply, German Supply Depot. And they're going to airdrop into that same hex. <clears throat> and the reason I'm doing this is to bolster up the defense just in case the, um, the Royal Air Force decides to stick their nose in down there. However, here's where it becomes difficult to figure out. And I've said before, I'm not really a fan of the air system in this game. But the British have to make a decision regarding do they try and mess up the bombers that are trying to come in here or do they try and screw with the transports further to the south. Any way that you look at it, they are going to probably take some losses, especially if they go against the bombers, um, because there are just multiple waves coming in. However, let's, it is, let's take a quick look at range here. See, Stavanger is out of range for them to reach should they decide to scramble and maybe get the heck out of there. Um, Bardufoss is probably also out of range. Um... Check range here to Bartufas is 32. So they're pretty much stuck there. <clears throat> so the only thing that, that they can really hope for is um, taking out a few bombers in exchange for their sacrifice. Uh, because these bombers are pretty much going to shut that airbase down. And it has to be shut down because I need to get, as the Germans, I need to get supplies into Trondheim and Bergen. And both are completely blocked off at the moment. The rest of these, like I said... They can't really go anywhere because the airfield shut down. 
So we're going to take these. We're going to simply fly them up to Fornebu Airfield. And this stack also up there doing an airdrop. Everything carrying supplies is performing an airdrop. Whereas everybody else is landing. So the Royal Air Force has an attack total of 11. That they can throw up and to attack these guys would be a one to two to attack let's spread these out just a little bit three spread these out to touch. There he is. One, two, three, four, five. So two, four, six. And six is twelve. So they'd get about a one to one against um, these transports. But it would also put them within range of that. Unfortunately, I can't fly escort on uh, at extended range, so <clears throat> currently I cannot get any fighters up here to protect them, but it seems like that would actually be the best bet. Let's go back to about 20% may have to add that so 16 so the skuas should be able to make it without any problems so it sounds like that would be the best bet and the safest move because once they get to here They are well within range of Solar Air Station <clears throat> and give them at least some semblance of safety and they can, if need be, they can flee back to Britain. But for now, they've done their job of keeping supplies out of here. So we're going to go through air combat 2, 4, 6, 11 versus 12 is 1 to 1. And they roll a 6, and that's a miss. I can tell already. And I'll read game chart 1 to 1, 6 is a miss. Three, two, four, six, nine. So one to three. And the Germans also miss. So from the looks of it, the Germans get to continue their mission. And meanwhile, the British escape unharmed. And they fly over here to Stavanger at Sola Air Station in order to... Now, that's highly unusual. You have a 50-50 shot at <clears throat> taking down some air units, and you get nothing. 
course, you don't lose anything, but you, you got nothing in return. So, let me start spreading these out. Because these are flying at extended range, their bombing strengths, their strategic bombing strengths, are reduced to a third. So three of these would be five. Three of these would be seven. These three here They are five, five, seven each. So we're going to start with them. Um, since they are full strength. We'll refer to the game chart. So because they are, they are five, they have a 50% chance of hit, to hit. So miss, miss. And then the seven... Oh, it's also on that, and they miss. So I think we're going to go for groups of three here. So seven, two rolls with seven. We got a hit and a hit. And one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have three groups of three. Also at. Uh, Five points each. Miss, hit, miss. So that's one, two, three hits. So we can place an airfield hit, then we can increase it and increase it so there's three hits there. And we can gather all these up and start sending them home. So this airfield is now shut down. The, um, but the threat to the supplies uh, has not been lifted. At least at Bergen. I believe, let me put these aside over here. Close this. So, I will take a look in just a moment. Let's send these back to Kiel. Send these back to Kiobenhaven. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Seems like there's something missing. Eight. Oh, yeah. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So there's three. I have three more that I could put there because there's a capacity of eighteen. I think I'm going to transfer some of these fighters and at least get a jump. Actually, I'm not. I'm going to two, one, and move up some of these dive bombers. Try to get them into action as soon as possible. Come on. 
Sometimes what it does is a pain in my backside. So the float planes have dropped their um, supplies. These guys ended up in the wrong hex. They could have. Oh, well, they were. So let's fly all these back to there. non float planes back to Germany. And then we will deal with we have <coughs> two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen points bombing the King's Guard, and they may only miss on a one. And before I do this, I fully expect that I'm going to roll a one. Nope, they actually got the hit. So they are disrupted and disorganized once again. We're going to gather these seven up and send them back to Kilbenhaven. again from Sola to there is 26 and that is just barely out of range for interception in fact we can oh according to that it's not Oh, because it's got a range of 26, not 25. So from Sola here, they still have Trondheim and Bergen uh, covered, along with this airfield as well and well into well let's let's do this again look at our these aircraft have pretty much all of southern Norway covered so again they still remain a major major threat so next turn that airfield is going to have to be taken it's going to have to be dealt with so let's zoom back in and i think that i have everything covered this rail junction here is covered that rail line is covered the rail line coming in from Bergen is covered. The rail lines coming around here, this is the only one that is not covered. Take a quick look at range here from the Norwegian point of view. Nope, that's too far that thing is just pretty much trapped 
So, first things first, we're going to attack the King's Guard. But the King's Guard, being no dummies, are just going to get out of there because they're outnumbered six to one. The um, Second Brigade headquarters, they're going to attempt to retreat. And they are allowed to. But they leave the trucks behind. Because they're outnumbered 9 to 1. And even with a 6 to 2. Well. Let's see. Let's go ahead and undo that. Let's let them make a stand there in Oslo. Because <clears throat> it's. 9 to 1. Or 6 to 1 odds. But, but there's a minus 2 for the city. And I forgot to put the interdiction hex in. Um, other excited interdiction, which that is also something that I uh, found the root cause of why those were not um, rotating, and that's been fixed. So they cannot escape. This is their only means of escape. But with a minus two, even at six to one, uh, they might be able to get a half exchange, but they would still take out a unit. Um, so really, that's their best bet, is that the Germans roll a five. So let's slide this down here. Let's make the roll. We got a five. Wow, that's amazing. So, that is destroyed. And the Germans would lose a one half of a point. But that one half of a point is enough to take out an artillery battalion granite um, captured battalion but the points count the same plus the trucks are get torched and are useless to the germans so we go to the turn VP part. We have one unit destroyed in combat. And that is the end of the Axis turn. Oslo has fallen to the Germans, but the 2nd Infantry Brigade headquarters put up a hell of a fight. And took a, a counter with them. The British are still threatening with their air units and right now they are completely out of reach. While things still do not look good for the Norwegians, they have not been blown out of the water yet. So now we move on to the Allied turn. So now the Allies get their shot in the second half of the turn. The Norwegians have several reinforcements showing up, including the infantry gun battalions, which arrive in place of the... Uh, artillery battalions that would have shown up at their um, artillery stores locations and they have to be within three hexes and I tried to put them in positions where they could escape if need be they also get five uh, regimental headquarters within seven hexes of Oslo and I've got them here where they arrive with a couple of battalions which I've placed to 
block not only the rail line leading to Trondheim and the uh, <clears throat> crossing of Lake Miosa and to protect uh, Mobilization Center 5. They also get a an artillery battalion up here at Mobilization Center 10. Uh, infantry gun battalion here. And another infantry battalion within one hex of the 5th Infantry Brigade. And then up here further to the north, the 7th Brigade Headquarters activates along with a, an artillery battalion and a mountain infantry battalion here at Tromso. So, again, they're going to be descending towards uh, Narvik to at least keep them from breaking out, which they're not going to be doing anytime soon, but it's all going to be in preparation for the attack uh, all eventually to come. Also, the Allies have two infantry brigades ready to come over to Norway and an anti-aircraft company or battery. Um, along with the Furious that has shown up that I have placed off of the coast of Bergen. And it's got two swordfish. It's not good for intercepting anything, but um, it's there so that it can potentially attack the airfield there. Uh, Bomber Command gets a few more... Um, bombers to use and they will likely be striking at this airfield here so now all the reinforcements have arrived we just need to check for uh, Norwegian mobilization it's turn two we will use the the topmost and we get a total of seven battalions starting with in column two so what we get four six fourteen thirteen and one well for starters so four has been captured by the germans i believe i believe it's right there yes yeah, so one battalion is lost. Oh, and uh, the reinforcements that were to arrive here and also in Trondheim uh, have been captured as well. They're already in the in the replacement pool here. Uh, so four six is also captured by the Germans so I always take out the weakest first if they're captured so that uh, just in case the mobilization center has is recaptured I can get stronger potentially get stronger units out so Moshan gets a battalion but that regiment is already pretty much um, mobilized. So that's the last one for that. 13 gets a battalion just outside of Trondheim. And again, that regiment is now fully mobilized. Two, three, four, six, seven, so all the way through the 11th. So the 11th is also has also been captured by uh, the Germans. So we will move that aside. The seventh. 
And yeah, I'm, I'm going to the very bottom of the chart, moving my way up. So the 7th has a battalion raised. And the 1st, I believe... is also captured. So out of the seven battalions that were mobilized, four were captured. And this is why the Germans want to uh, capture these as many of these mobilization centers as quickly as possible. So here I am going to, after a lot of consideration, I am going to abandon Christensen, Christian Sand, and retreat back towards Stavanger. Um, to protect the airfield. Just in case the... Uh, oh, that's another thing. So, one of these comes off. So now that airfield is uh, functional again. <clears throat> Meanwhile, these two mountain units are going to head down and take over Christ the protection of Christian Sun. Um, I'm going to move one over here to protect the airfield, keep any paratroopers from moving in. These units are going to start heading out one, two, three. And we're going to abandon the airfield because they are in danger of being cut off. I'm going to take the regiment with them. There are no airfields within range. I take that back. They can fly at ex this attack bomber can fly at extended range to Sola. And so now the airfield is completely abandoned to the Germans. I'm going to move this cavalry unit over to here and the King's Guard is going to move north to begin the defensive line uh, blocking Trondheim. Now it's not like the Germans can't get around Actually, that is four, one, one, two, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So they actually have enough to rail to there. These guys can't rail because they just don't have enough. Well, one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four. So they can rail to there. <clears throat> Over at the Bergen front, we are going to take the AA that was protecting the war spite and move it out to protect the, the aircraft carrier. I mean, the war spite can be attacked and it can be hit, but it can't be sunk. So it's just each hit is for victory points. And then this I'm going to move to here. 
just to make bolster the defenses outside of Bergen. Now here, who, what is here? Can't move there because of stacking. Can't move there because of stacking. So, one, two, three. That's one now in train two, so they have one left. They can't cross the mountains. So we're going to try to form some form of defensive line there. And one, two, three, four. Seventh Brigade. Um, Seventh Brigade. This battalion is going to see left to Harstad, and the Alta Battalion is going to continue to 3-4. Continue to trek along. Now down here at Namsos, the I always try to, or I always have the British land at Nam's house if Bergen is not open. So we're going to open this up. We're going to place a supply base there at Nam's house. We're going to put AA protection. We're going to land the 24G and the 148th there. Having been shipped there, they cannot move any further or move for this turn. Oh, I'm trying to grab the wrong thing here. So then over here at Bergen, we have the uh, Attack bombers from the Furious. And they are going to fly in and they're going to try and disrupt uh, the Germans here. Just add insult to injury. The Bombers from Bomber Command are going to be flying in and hitting the airbase. They're all flying at night. Well, actually, there's no reason for them to be flying at night because there are no interceptors. So it is 14 hexes, 36 hexes, forty one. So everybody is reduced to a third. 
they've got some, for the time, they've got some pretty good strategic bombers. All of these planes, if I recall correctly, are all ugly as sin, but they were effective. <clears throat> so two, two, three, four, five, and then this is one and one ever, so I'm going to put this one. So we get one, one, two, three, four, five shots, and they will hit on a five or a six. One, one hit. So they get one hit on the airfield, not quite shutting it down. No AA there. So Allied charts. Send them back to London. And then we're going to attack. First of the 193rd, or one's going to attack the first of the 193rd, one's going to attack the, the third of the 193rd, and they will hit on a five or a six. And there's a five, and there's a five, an amazingly amazing job by the Allies coming in and just completely messing that up. That's three, two, three, six. Almost makes me wish that I had just gone ahead and attacked. Um, so, swordfish, swordfish, clones. And really, for right now, that is pretty much it for the Allies. They're trying to consolidate down here in the southern tip of Norway. Thought about attacking Bergen, but I wasn't completely sure. Because at the time, it was 3-6. So it was 1-1 one one at the time. And one to one, with the exception of six, would have been really bad news for the Norwegians. Not that two to one would have been much better, especially considering it's rough there, and I think it has no effect. So, right now, the Allies are just trying to practice a strategy of containment and they're moving to where they can uh, make a potential attack on Norvik and see if they can drive the Germans out of there. So, anyway, move the turn up to April 16th to 19th. That's the next turn. Until next time, I will try other errors that I've found. I will try to correct. I've been correcting them as I've been going along. Um, oh, and this one. One, three, four. Don't want them to miss the party. So, until next time, take care.